All right, what's going on guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing a video review for Breaking Bad Season 5, Episode 8, which is sort of like a season finale, but not completely. Sort of like a half season finale because we won't get to see the second half of Season 5 until next summer. So it's kind of like this is Season 5 and then there's Season 6, but they're only 8 episodes each. Um, really, it just seems like because they went for 16 episodes this season, uh, which is a lot to do in any in any like you know one hour series. They decided let's split it up and get another year out of it, which makes sense uh, to me personally. I don't mind having to wait until next summer because it's like, yeah, yeah, it, it kind of sucks. You kind of want to see the rest of it right now and see it all in right now. But we, there was a lot of material that was released obviously this summer with uh, you know the eight episodes that did come out, which had a lot of good stuff in them. You know, and it'll also give us a chance to look over the series again before next summer when they finish it up. So, you know, I mean, now that we know that next uh, summer will be the last uh, and they won't be shooting a season six, that'll be it. Obviously, probably something big will happen at the end in which, um, you know, the story will no longer continue afterwards. So maybe they'll kill Walt or, you know, all these. There's lots of different options, lots of different things that can happen. But um, that's definitely my prediction, I think, is that that's probably what they'll do. It, I don't think it's that bad anyway that we have to, you know, wait till next time to see it because that will be the end of it all. So, you know, but definitely it's been a fantastic series. And uh, this episode I thought was great. Really, really good. Um, now, compared to the sort of season finales we've had in the last two years, though, I have to say it's not quite as good as those, although it is really holy shit. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this spoiler free or as spoiler free as possible, but actually there will be some spoilers. So if you're if you're kind of worried, uh, you probably don't want to watch this. Um, season three and season four, uh, those had some amazing season finales. This one, even though it's not like a true, it's not truly a, a season finale per se, we still kind of have to rate it on the same scale as those because it kind of is too, because, you know, it's like they're splitting it. Um, and it was really good, I think. Obviously, nothing is probably ever going to top. Uh, the death of Gus Fring, season four uh, end, or, you know, even the season three end, I thought was amazingly exciting too. This one was different, um, of course, because there was no like type of like gun battle or big enemy, you know, uh, that he's going up against like another drug lord or something that he has to mess with or something has to happen with. This one was more sort of like uh, kind of everything imploding from within, you know, within his situation, within Walter's situation. Um, by the way, this episode is called Gliding Over All. Um, okay, so we'll break it down from the beginning. We start off, we see a fly, and uh, you've got Walter watching the fly. Sort of reminded me of that episode a couple years ago where they were, Jesse and Walt were cooking, and there was a fly in there, and they spent like the whole like two days or something trying to trap this fly he even makes like this fly uh <laughs> what is he used tape i think uh to wrap around something like a broom or something what was it i forget uh to try to catch this fly so it kind of reminded me of that and then um talks to todd todd you know basically sets him up with his uncle who uh you know is about to execute walt's plan for him and take out those nine prisoners which, uh, oh man, you know, now people did call that definitely. I mean, it was pretty easy to call, but uh, that part right there, I just felt like, oh man, like I almost kind of felt guilty for liking Walt when you when they show the scene. There's like a montage, and all the uh, the prisoners are getting like uh, just just stabbed with those like dirty prison uh, shanks, you know, the uh, where they take like forks and stuff and they just like file them down to the point where they're sharp and, and they don't cut clean or anything. And it's just, oh man, all the guys in there that were, were getting it. I just felt so bad for, for actually liking Walt as a character. Uh, and also too, I think he's gone past the point of his actions being redeemable. Because I mean, even though those guys are all, you know, involved in that kind of stuff and uh, they're not good people per se, that's still nine guys. Um, that you know you're you're killing those nine people even though they're not the best kind of people just to keep yourself free and actually there are other options too like he you know just to keep your life sort of going the way it is and your operation and everything continuing he doesn't necessarily have to do that like there are other options too Walt could take the money that he had at that point which probably was a lot you know enough because I mean let's be honest here if you have a million dollars in cash okay that's enough money for you to survive 
the rest of your life if you're not an idiot with it. I mean, you can survive the rest of your life with a million dollars in cash. You really can. And never no, never work another day in your whole life if you want to do that. So, I mean, Walt's had enough money to survive off of with his family for a long time. I mean, he could run and he could change his identity, do that kind of stuff if he has to. And, um, you know get away with uh, you know get away with it instead of having to kill these nine guys there are what I'm saying is that there are other options and I don't feel like he's justified in in, in doing that at all uh, was it exciting to see I don't know it was kind of a, a really dark scene to see that type of thing and um, you know I just didn't well I mean Walt has crossed over now I don't think he's really a hero I don't even think he's like an ant anti-hero type thing he's full-fledged turned into a villain at this point that's for sure and then Hank is actually probably, uh, you know, your your hero type character in this story, which is really strange because I actually don't particularly like Hank. Maybe that's maybe that's just because it's shot from the angle of Walt, but I I don't I don't like Hank uh, at all. Um, yeah, not at all. I mean, I don't like his stupid jokes he cracks. I don't like the way he thinks he's you know the greatest thing since sliced bread. I I just don't like anything about Hank. I hate him, but he's actually the good guy in this story. Um, so going on from there, now Walt does redeem himself a bit with a scene that I really liked a lot, which is where he goes to visit Jesse, which is kind of, you know, out of the blue. Like, it was such a weird scene. Like, I, when Jesse goes to look at the window and, and see who's outside, I'm like, I'm like thinking to myself, like, this is a season finale. Is it cops or is it Walt? You know, like, what's going, what's going to happen? And then you see Walt there, and it's just like, wow, so weird. They're talking inside, and I was, like, thinking, like, is he going to give him the money, isn't he? Is, you know, what's he going to do? Um, because Jesse's basically broke. I mean, I think he is anyway. I don't think he has hardly anything. So, and he just leaves two big, you know, humongous uh, duffel bags full of cash. How much was it? I don't know if it was five million. Um, I don't know, but like I said, if you have a million dollars, you never have to work again. That's <laughs> that's the advantage of that. You never have to do anything you don't want to do, and that's that really is is the power of money right there. Is that you get to be free. A lot of people, you know, greed. You can you can want to have a lot of money for greedy reasons because you want to have things like, oh, I want to have this and I want to have that and I want to drive a Viper and I want to have, you know, a hundred thousand or a million dollar house and all this kind of stuff. That's that's greed. That's one way to want to have money. But uh, the healthy way, I think personally, is actually not to want to have, you know, materialistic things like that, like a Viper and all these other things. It would just be to have freedom, you know, to the point where. You know, if if your job's not going well, or you don't want to do it. You don't have to do it. <laughs> You've got all you know, tons of money. You just do what you want to do. You know, you have true freedom. So, um, you know, if people are smart with it, a million dollars, you're set forever. So hopefully, Jess would be smart with it, and make the right decisions. And it kind of seems like his character at this point may be kind of out of the show. I mean, he's got his money. He's out completely. You know, he's got no tie. He's, he doesn't really have loose ends. Uh, the way Walt has had all throughout the series. At least, I don't think he has many loose ends. Um, you know, yeah, because he wasn't the head of the operation. He wasn't the... People don't know him, really. I mean, he's just one of the guys who's involved. But people don't really know Jesse, so he can be just, like, out totally. Uh, for sake of the story, I think they're going to bring him back in, in in the next season because he's been in it since the beginning, you know, uh, and he's such a he's such a fun, cool uh, character that I think that Walt will eventually come to him for help for something probably with everything that's going on. But I mean, he really could be out of the story at this point and not have to not have to come back or anything. Um, going on from there, the uh, the scene with um, Skyler, uh, you know, I first of all I want to say what the hell happened to Skyler's eyebrows? <laughs> she has not had eyebrows for the longest time. I keep forgetting to mention it, but I don't know where they went. She just has no eyebrows. It's it's just really bizarre to me. How do you have no eyebrows? Like, what did you do to them? You know, like they, what did you do? Did you shave them? Like, what, what's going on? Anyway, what's going on there? Uh, so that was a cool scene too when, you know, she actually, you know, did something cool. Like, like she brings Walt to the storage shed and she shows him the money. And he's like, how much is here? And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how much this is. I can't count it. It's too much for me to sit here and, and go ahead and go through and wash it and count it or, you know, uh, do whatever I have to do. It's, it's just too much. And also, too, if they were to try to put the, all that on the books, it, it would probably look suspicious because of the volume. Because people see like a car wash, you know, to see that much money, they'd be like, how is a car wash bringing in like, you know, uh, tens and 20, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars when before it wasn't even making money? 
you know, it's not that busy either. So obviously, you know, she couldn't really wash it all through there because it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't make sense for the for the numbers either. Um, so I thought that whole scene was really cool where she's just like, how much is going to be enough? You know, like, look what you have. You know, at this point, you know, there is no reason to get any more. You have so much here. You could never spend it, even if you're an idiot. Like, and, and how much is was there there if we had to guess? Are we thinking like, here, why don't you guys write in the comments, we'll kind of discuss what amount do you think? Plus, if you see someone else who comments the amount, thumb them up uh, so we can kind of get an idea how much money you guys think that was. Uh, my guess is it'd probably be, you know, in the tens of millions, I guess, um, maybe close to 50 to 100 million. I mean, it's really hard to say, but obviously it was a ton, ton of money. Uh, so I'm get definitely in the millions, tens to 100 million, I'd say probably somewhere. If I had to guess, I'd probably say maybe like, I don't know, 30, 40 million or something like that. Maybe more, maybe 50. Um, so either way, that was cool. The montage of going through of Walt just like getting rich, just like, you know, making boatloads of cash was crazy too. Uh, also, seen with him meeting with Lydia, I thought was kind of a uh, kind of funny scene too. She's funny, just she's so awkward and stuff. And um, you know the way the way he said to her after, he's like, uh, "Learn to uh, <laughs> accept someone saying yes, Lydia." And she's just she's just so nervous and stuff. And I don't know, I, I like Lydia. She's kind of funny, and you got to think too that she'll be involved in the story somehow. You know, later on, uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, so that's those parts. And then, of course, um, at the very end, uh, the big shocker. This does this part does contain spoilers, so if you haven't seen it, you're worried. Get out. Um, last warning. <laughs> so then, you know, we get to see basically everybody. You know, Walt says he's out. And um, that, to me, was the biggest shocker right there. What You know, what happened afterwards was pretty big, too. But for him to say he was out, I was like, what? Really? Like, I didn't think he was going to do that, especially after last episode. I didn't think he was ever going to say he was out. But, you know, I think it makes sense, you know, when you get to that amount. Um, it kind of makes you think, though, why didn't he just take the $5 million to begin with? You know? I mean, I don't know. I guess he's just kind of one of those people that, you know, he had something set in his mind that he wanted to do. And, uh, you know, he went for it. So, but... Either way, you know, he got his whole life back. Everything was back together and everything seemed like it was good. You've got Hank and Marie over. Skylar's happy. She's smiling. Then you've got the kids. They're playing, you know. And then Hank goes into the washroom. And the big uh, the big thing that happens, he picks up the book that's under uh, a magazine while he's on the can, uh, which was kind of weird. You just see him, like, sit on the can there. And he just starts and, and he looks at it. Then he gets the flashback and he thinks to himself, you know, Walter White, WW, you caught me in that whole thing. Um, so yeah. Now, it does he one hundred percent like know that it's Walter White? I mean, I think that. And what's he going to do about it? So that's interesting too. Does he know it's him? And what will he do about it? Oh, this is interesting. Actually, I might do a whole video on predictions for the next uh, for the next season, what I think is going to happen. But I'll just touch a little bit on it now. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10. I thought it was a really, really good episode uh, in terms of a season, you know, season finale type thing. Nothing will compare to the death of Gus Fring and uh, even Gale and, and some of the other stuff, you know, in the other season finales was amazing too. But this was a really, really good one, and it was definitely different from the others. So I liked it a lot. Not a 10, but you know, an 8.5 was really, really good. Um, okay, so that being said, uh, what's Hank going to do? Does he know for sure, or is it kind of one of those things that he's kind of, the thought comes to him, but then then after next season, he's going to think like, like uh, oh, maybe not. You know, that type of thing, like where, where you get a thought in your head, and then and then you go back out, and you see them, and you're, no, that, that can't be. It's got to be something else. Or, you know, is he going to bring it up with him? Is, is he going to let it go? Because the kids are back at home now, and he sees everything that's going on. Even if he knows that it was Walt, Will he bring him in? That's that's really interesting uh, to see what will happen with that. Um, I personally think that now that Walt is out, he's not doing any harm to anybody. That uh, Hank might for Skylar because he's a sister too, and that would affect her as well. Um, maybe just talk to him about it and deal with it himself and tell him, you know, like you better be out and completely out, and just keep it between them and not actually bring him in for it. Um, that's really, really interesting. Uh, I'd like to hear what you guys think about that. Right below in the comments, we'll talk about it. What do you think Hank's going to do now that he's kind of come to the realization that 
there is a chance that Walter, um, you know, is is Heisenberg, uh, and is the one who's been doing all of this because he is in chem. You know, he knows that he's a chemist. That he knows that the stuff is pure. He knows all about it, and obviously he knows that they got rich or pretty pretty well, pretty well off. They've had problems at home. All this stuff's been going on. Will he be convinced that it's him? And also, will he have any proof, really? You know, because that's another thing, too, is that, you know, he can kind of know it at the same time. But if he doesn't have any concrete proof, which who knows at this point, because there was the montage there and all that, and, you know, how, how much further along is, are the characters at now than how long has Walt been out at that point? You know, it, it skipped a scene, but he could actually have been out for a while. He could have been out for, like, a couple of months in between that, you know, who knows? I mean, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes the way edited and stuff. Um, it seems kind of like next minute type thing, but uh, it might not be. And will there be a way for him to catch him? Oh, that's that's interesting. Will he try to catch him? Uh, there's a lot of possibilities. So let's talk about it, guys. Let me know what you thought about uh, season five, or at least the first half of it overall of Breaking Bad. I love this season, man. I did. Probably my favorite part about this season is how much change. Uh, the characters went through. You know, you got the beginning of the season, you had an operation going, and then by the end of the season, their lives are completely different, and everything is completely changed. And um, you know, now now the whole sort of the whole concept of the show has like shifted. You know, the whole everything about it has shifted to the point where now it's like not really about Walt being up against somebody else like he was against Gus or, you know, the dangers of that and, you know, and trying to make money and all this kind of stuff. Now he's in a state where that doesn't matter at all to him whatsoever. So that's probably my favorite part about this season is how much change the characters went through. Uh, some characters didn't make it. I thought that was pretty interesting too. And also too, uh, Walter becoming even more of a badass and then saying he's out and just going against it, you know, um, Maybe we'll see next season, even though Walt says he's out and all that kind of stuff, maybe he was lying, you know? I mean, that's another thing, too, you got to think about. Maybe he just, you know, he can't get out. Maybe he'll have to go back in, or I guess we'll see, guys. It'll be interesting, but uh, definitely a, a lot of fun this season. I hope you guys enjoyed my review. If you do, please thumb it up, favorite it if you want to, and let's talk about it. Breaking Bad, Season 5, uh, first half finale, gliding overall. Great episode, great season. Later, guys.